What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osman. I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? Hey, Chief. I'm doing great today. How are you? Oh, I'm doing awesome, awesome, because we got, we got some good company today. Some great company today. Surely do. That is for sure. Absolutely. So I, we got a wonderful guest that in my head, we kind of grew up together, but it was like a one way friendship. <laughs> uh, I knew her, but she didn't know anything about me. So, <laughs> but, but she was a part of one of the best groups to ever do it in the music industry. And today we'll be discussing a topic that absolutely every human can relate to. So without further ado, Leah, please introduce today's guest. Chief, yes, sir. Today's guest is Grammy award-winning recording artist who rose to fame as a member of the R&B group Destiny's Child. She has an incredible solo career and as an actress has performed on Broadway in the West End. She's also passionate about mental health and she's here today to discuss her new book, Checking In, How Getting Real About Depression Saved My Life and Can Save Yours. So please give a, chief, a warm Chief Chat welcome to Michelle Williams. Hey. Uh, it's so good to be here today. Thank y'all for having me. Oh, absolutely. Michelle, it's such an honor to have you on. And everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yay. Leave your comments and questions for Michelle. We'll read those live. So leave them there. You want to get a chance for that. If you're not following our page, you should, because that will help you get notifications when we go live. And we have great military exclusive guests lined up for you all summer long. Awesome. So M Michelle, it's awesome to have you with us today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank y'all for having me. Oh, so I did my little, my little stalking before the interview, right? So I got to get smart on Michelle Williams, right? And I, and I just realized that me and you were born literally days apart. Uh, really? I, and I won't say the year because I don't know how you feel about being born that year, but I I, I feel good about it. But uh, I feel good about it. Yeah, yeah. So I was born July seventeenth, nineteen seventy nine, and oh, and you are a week older than me. A week. That's it. That's oh, it. good. I thought I was older than you. I was not going to be happy about that. <laughs> Would you? Well, no. It's it's the cocoa butter. That's all. It, the cocoa <laughs> butter makes me look about about six six days younger. So. That, that's awesome. I love it, love it, love it, love it. So can you tell the viewers uh, where you're calling in today from and, and, and how you've been doing? Yeah, I've been doing great. I'm calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, ATL. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, uh, how you been doing I in the pandemic it. personally? Like, Yeah, personally, it's been working out for me because I, I'm a homebody anyway. So people have to drag me out to even do things. So... Um, to, I'm okay, but my heart has gone out to some friends of mine that are extroverts who just thrive on human connection and just being outdoors. Some people need it, you know, so um, I've been really um, having compassion for those who aren't like me. Like I said, I love being home. So when they said lockdown, I'm like, oh, you was good with that. Huh? I was, I, I was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, so I guess the consistent theme is it kind of made made the whole world kind of stop and, and just, you know, take a take a pause. I think we had Diddy on the show and he said this was us taking a knee uh, that and Diddy's one of those extroverts, uh, definitely, yeah. that, that likes to get out and do his thing. But uh, yeah, but, but he, yeah. he talked about, you know, taking a knee and, and really just uh, taking a, taking advantage of the, the peace and calmness of. of yeah. Hope. Yeah. So. So let's let's talk about your new book checking in. So okay. uh man, it, it is here. very it's here. There absolutely. it is. And you absolutely can find that in the shopmyexchange.com. So please, please, please support the book. It's a super important read and it's got a powerful message about your mental health journey. Yeah. So talk to us about the book and why you want to share your story now. I wrote the book checking in um, just so that people don't feel alone so that maybe they can put some language to what they've been going through or, or what they've been feeling in the past and then giving them the courage to maybe go process some of those things. Um, and I abide by the three pillars in my book, checking in with others, checking in with yourself and 
checking in with God, but it's to motivate and to inspire. And like I said, the main thing is to let people know that you're not alone or that um, you're weak for uttering the words that I had to say, which was, I need help. Yeah, I think I think a lot of military folks uh, can definitely connect with you on this book. Well, and I won't even say military folks, just people in general, because I think we all struggle through something. We all going through something mm -hmm. and we, we um, and me as a man, personally, we, we just think we're tough and we don't have to ask for help and we try to figure out stuff. I think yeah, I was right. Yeah, because y'all don't like to ask help, like for directions. Or nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're 80 miles away from where we're supposed to be. I think we need to stop and ask for help. No, nah, babe, we're going to be fine. And two days later, we're still not, no, I'm just playing. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's, it's like, I'm, I'm by the McDonald's, but it's like, it's like 35 McDonald's in the city. And, and so, yeah, I, I totally understand. But, uh, but we, we, we've been really focused, hyper-focused uh, a lot more in the military on mental health because- That's so good. Uh, yeah, because it, it's, it's super important. And we talk about, you know, making sure we take care of ourselves. And, and if I go break my leg, I'm going to go to a doctor to get my leg fixed. So if I got something broken inside of my, my mentally or spiritually, yeah. Uh, we 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 don't go and get checked out like we should. Yeah, and just so people know, like anger and sadness, um, especially we know those are natural, legitimate responses to something that's taken place in your life. It's just how long does it linger is when it becomes a problem. And so when it begins to linger and then it, it starts to, to affect your day to day activities, it begins to affect your relationships with people, then that's when you gotta be okay to say, wow, through my hurt, it's making me hurt other people. That's not okay. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry about things that have happened. It's not okay to stay there. Absolutely. For sure. And Michelle, you talked about this earlier. So in, and in the book, you described checking in with God, with yourself and with others. So. Can you share with us why these three check-ins are so vital to emotional wellness? Um, yes, checking in with yourself is so important. Checking in with yourself just means you're aware of self, how you're doing. I check in with myself a few times a day when I wake up in the morning, in my day, and then before I go to sleep at night, because I don't want to go to sleep carrying you know, anything negative because I don't want to wake up feeling heavy and I don't, you know, so I try to make sure that I check in with myself, you know, making sure, okay, well, how are you feeling today? Or you had a hard conversation or like for me, I check in with myself. I'm in book promo mode. It's been a heavy few weeks. I'm, so when people ask me how I'm doing, I'm like, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> a natural response to Absolutely. hard work. Um, checking in with others is, you know, checking in with others. Um, hey, how are you doing? And then them asking me, how am I doing? And giving honest answers, really checking in to the, the foundation has to be honesty. And then checking in with God. God, you see that I'm overwhelmed. Or God, I'm so happy and grateful. I'm, I, I'm just filled with so much gratitude that today I had a good day. That's it. That's it. And so checking in is like, like you said, it's super important. Um, I probably, I do check in with myself in the mornings. Like that, that's, that's something important to me. Uh, checking in with others is where I gotta get, I gotta get better uh, because you know, you, especially the folks that you, you kind of assume got it all together. Those are the ones that get neglected more than, more so the people that are going through some stuff, you tend to check on them a little bit more than you do check on the folks yeah. that you figure are, Got it. Got everything going together. Yeah, and yeah. So that that's super important. And I'm glad you kind of hype. You you kind of focused in on checking in because uh, it's definitely definitely important. And of course, checking in with God. That's just that goes without saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so so right now you got a, a captive audience. You got soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Guardians, Coast Guard members, and military families watching from all over the Amazing. world. Amazing. I know they love to Michelle now. So. So do you have any like words of encouragement or uh, or something to share with our heroes, especially the ones that may be struggling right now? Absolutely. I don't I, I don't live far from a base. And is it Ro Robbins? Is it Robbins Air Force Base or Dobbins? Dobbins. Yes, Dobbins. Yeah, Dobbins. Yeah. And the planes come in. I mean, 
close. <laughs> I'm like, do I got to run for cover? Because that's good. That wing is close to my window. Um, so every day, by the way, every day, I'm reminded of the real brave ones, the people who protect and go and fight for our world, basically. It's not just our country, because I know that you guys are called in to help other um, countries. So you guys, you know, help protect our world. So I'm reminded every day. Um, and I, I actually start anticipating the loud rumble. Um, oh, okay. You got it on happens. schedule? You know, and it happens sometimes when I'm watching Judge Judy and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> can y'all like, you know, bag back a couple feet, you know? Yeah. Um, so just, I just wanted to uh, send that type of love your way and just thank you for that. And, you know, during my time of Destiny's Child, we did a lot of things for the military and going to various air, I mean, going to various military bases and doing performances and stuff. So, you know, when this opportunity came for me today, um, I did not hesitate um, because I know you guys need outlets or people to encourage you um, and to say thank you. And I don't know... Um, I know that being in the military, you know, sometimes, you know, depending on where you're stationed and what it is that you're involved in, you see a lot. You see a lot. There are certain decisions you probably have to make quickly. And so um, I just want to make sure that, you know, you have the help that you need and or you know take advantage of the resources that are available to you should you find yourself in a moment of sadness or anger about something and know that you are not weak um for you know it's the strong person that gets the help you have to be strong to sign up for that field that you're in but it takes you know great strength you know it's the strong that gets the help that they need Absolutely. And, and we appreciate, um, you know, you because you like you said, doing this press run, it, it, it wear you out. Right. And so we appreciate you even, you know, taking that time to say, you know what, I'm tired, but I'm still going to, you know, talk to talk to my military uh, family as well. Absolutely. So. Could you imagine if y'all decided not to serve because you're tired? <laughs> yeah, Ooh, we'd be in trouble. Trouble. <laughs> you're right. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Mm hmm. And Michelle, we wanted to let our military viewers know that checking in will be available at select exchange stores and on shopmyexchange.com. And so amazing. We got you. One, <laughs> we got it. Uh, one part of the book that stood out for me, though, was when you talked about your rise to fame and how you thought you might be feeling depressed, but you were told, you know, what do you have to be depressed about? So I believe this is an all too common refrain. So what advice do you have for people when they are told essentially that their feelings are invalid? Well, you know, not only was it said, what do you, I think for me, it was you have all these amazing things going on for you what what those things that you have going on for you should make you happy you should make things easier for you but I've come to find out money does a few money helps it helps you pay your bills on time mm -hmm. but sometimes money doesn't take away the pain mm -hmm. right or you can use money in an unhealthy way to medicate pain because sometimes when you have money you're able to buy tons of things to medicate with right that's not the way um, the way is wholeness. The way is getting healing from pain and trauma, grief. Sometimes we don't even know how to grieve a loss properly, you know, because some, a lot of us, we have to get to work so quickly. And before you know it, that grief sets in and you're like, where did that come from? You know? So, you know, when I left home, I was like, oh yes. I was like, when I leave home and get successful, you know, I can't wait. And um, yeah, well, that pain was still lingering. That pain was waiting too. Um, so just making sure that you're able to process pain a little quicker so that it doesn't affect you and come out the blue um, somewhere down the road. For sure, for sure. And the other thing for me is like, you can have happiness is, is almost like a temporary thing as well, um, I found, but joy 
if you if you lose your joy right then you've lost yeah. it but if you still keep that joy and you could have joy even in in the roughest of times right but yeah um that that's just that's for me how i've how i've looked at things um, mm, that's so good leah mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. so good and mm. then you also talk about forgiveness in the book so um can you share with us why is learning to forgive both healing and powerful you know um forgiveness is so important forgiveness does not mean what the other person did to you um was right it means you no longer want to hold it over their head anymore it means you want to free yourself and move on they already have most people that have inflicted pain on you have moved on most people that inflicted pain on you don't even know that they've inflicted the pain on you and also forgiving yourself Forgive yourself for things that you might have done. Forgive yourself for having the outbursts or the responses of anger that have hurt other people. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for tolerating the abuse. Um, but forgive others. I'm not saying, and mind you, forgiving others doesn't mean um, we're going to go to Shake Shack now and have all the burgers and fries. <laughs> no. So, forgiveness doesn't mean I have to pick up the phone and tell you, I forgive you. It's a choice you make in your heart and soul to say, I, I, I choose to forgive this person and I still, God bless them, take care of them, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to reshape what we reap by what we sow. So if you wanna, if you want forgiveness, then you sow forgiveness, you know? Sweet. So Michelle, you must have been on my Facebook and my Instagram today because I posted a quote today uh, that it says, uh, sometimes your worst enemy is your own memory. Let it go. And so I kind of yeah. and I kind of I kind of wrap that around forgiveness. And, for, and, and I mentioned yeah. forgiving others and forgiving yourself because That's so good, chief. Yeah. So I, I'm just like, man, that, that was on my spirit. And then you kind of just said exactly what was on yeah. there. Um, and, then, and when you say let it go, it's not dismissing what somebody, it's correct. not dismissing the pain that you feel when someone has wronged you, betrayed you, abused you, hurt you, whatever. It's not, it's not dismissing what it feels like. It's just choosing to say, I no longer allow this to control correct. my emotions. Paralyze you. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Because like you said, when you still are holding on to stuff, Anytime somebody mentions that person or does anything, something that reminds you of that person or reminds you of that act, it it just it takes it takes over. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you just gotta I tell people you got you gotta control your blood pressure. Yes. Figure, figure out how to control your own blood pressure. Don't let any anybody else control your blood pressure. That's it. That's it. That's it. And then too, you know, when you're when you're thinking of someone and it triggers an emotion get some help and let somebody walk walk you through that process and get to the root of it uproot it and move on yeah no one when you think of someone now when i think of somebody i want to i want that thought to be of laughter like or thinking of something funny that they did you know not to where it makes you tense up because it does have an effect on your physical body it does you know so i that's that's tricky. I don't know what the comments are saying right now, but it, it's I'm not telling you what to do, but they're not worth a headache, literal headache. They're not worth a heart attack. They're not worth cancer. They're not worth dementia. A lot of these things that I'm saying are linked to um, not forgiving. Yep. Oh, absolutely. So it. It's been a long year for Americans, and so we all ready to kind of get our lives back. Uh, I know you you ain't tripping because you know you you, you said you're a homebody anyway. So you know, I, but I know when you have to do your your press runs, you have to kind of get out get out yeah. get out the door. So um, so even though this was your comfort zone, I'm I'm sure there was a little bit of things you had to kind of go through as the pandemic because it, it it was fearful for a lot of people. Nobody knew you know how long it was going to be. How, how devastating it's going to be. It was devastating. It, you know, there's a lot of people that lost their lives. Uh, but how have you stayed resilient during that time? Was it, you know, I, I know you got your three pillars. Did you kind of lean on that uh, during that time? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Those three pillars um, have been working for me um, for about three years now. So it was three years, was three years ago was like when you kind of like, I guess, uh, intently, like, you know what, I need to, ch- I, some, whatever I was yes. doing before this ain't working three yes. years. Okay, gotcha. Yes, absolutely. And routine can be boring, but it works. Ru- consistency can seem rather boring, you know, for me, because, you know, I'm used to moving around and blah, 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 but it's like, there are certain areas where consistency works for me and okay. it's doing those three check-ins. Yep. Yep. Okay. So that that's the formula, right? That's for me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Checking yeah. in with others, self and God in no particular order. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So Michelle, we have the military community watching live from all over the world. Amazing. I just want to pause for a second and share some viewer comments with you. Okay. And Jacqueline says, awesome. Greetings from Puerto Rico. Love her music. Thank you. You know, I've never been to Puerto Rico. Never? Either. Let's go. <laughs> I've never been. That's a shame. Yes. Nolan says, looking forward to reading your book. Most of us fight with our inner demons at some point in our mm. lives. Gracie says, greetings from Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Um... Army MWR, they say, uh, thanks for joining. We are sharing this to our page. And then Jamie says, it's the strong person that gets the help that they need. Yes, yes. Oh, amazing. Yes. And then chief from your page, uh, Tech Sergeant Rodrigue is on. And she says, uh, hey, woohoo, got to get me a copy. Oh. And then she said amen to something. So amazing, amazing. You know what? Um, I would I would want them to also put in your comments what you think the stigmas are as it relates to mental health and going to therapy. Yes. I'm curious to know their answers. What are the stigmas of going to get help and so, mental health that so, you guys see or hear on a daily basis? So, so I'm going to speak for a lot of things because I've I, you know I've been in the military for. It'll be 24 years in September. Man, I'm. You're I, dating I'm yourself. Up there. You, 24 years, Lord. Don't, geez. don't but, share all that. You're dating yourself. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but so the, there was a stigma. That there, there is a stigma in the military where we feel like you know if we go see help, it prevents us from different opportunities. It prevents like us. Uh, like, so if 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 you can't you can't deploy to certain parts of the world because they don't have the the the. They don't have the resources to help you with your condition, uh, whatever that condition may be. So there's a stigma of like, you know what? I don't want to be limited on on opportunity or if, if it's too severe, the military may may separate you because of uh, the severity of it and, 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 and the, the job that you have. So if you have somebody that's like a, a security po- police officer, uh, they have to have a weapon and if they have a, a, a severe type of, of situation then we have to disarm them. We can't allow them to carry that weapon. And then and then that affects their career and, and all this other stuff. So there's a stigma that if I do this, I'm going to ruin my career. And so that, but but the thing about the military is that we put people in in such a, you know, some, some we see some stuff that we we can't unsee, right? Being in certain, certain parts of the world. And we are the, we absolutely have to go uh, and seek, seek help uh, yes. I say I don't. I, I I always stress to my folks that hey, go if you need help. For one thing, say something because that's the thing. People try to fight these battles alone and they don't say anything. And and it's not. I, I, I as much as I try to you know diagnose and, and notice for you know behavior. Some people are good at hiding. Some people are good at uh, uh, not showing their cards. Right. So it's hard for me to be able to tell if something's going on. Uh, unless you speak up. So I always tell people speak up and absolutely go get help. And and that's that's one of the stigmas in the military. That's the that's the thing that leaders in the military are trying to get around that stigma because uh, we want to have uh, our folks stay in the military. We want them to be able to do their job to the best of their capacity. And mm. we want them to be healthy and whole at the same time. Mm. So that that's definitely, if you're going to, if the comments are coming in on the military side, that's definitely probably something you're going to uh, see. We okay. do have a couple of those. Uh, so 
if you seek help and just hey just be like hey i've been trying to process this on my own um i've been having some sadness for the past three months okay well why then you get to the root of the sadness oh it's because i saw something in war last year and it's starting to affect me so they can take away your rank or weapons oh so no they, they won't take away your rank it's, it's not a it's not a, a it's not a punitive thing to where we're okay. trying to get people in trouble. It's more of, we want to help you, but while we're helping you, uh, you may not be, we, we want to make sure everybody's safe. You're safe. Yeah. We're your folks around you are safe because if you're triggered by something, you might black out, you know, it's just certain. And, and these are just different types of situations. So, uh, I understand why they do it. I think that people are, are, are should be more focused on getting help. Than, than whether or not they can carry a weapon for two or three months. You know what I'm saying? I think the focus- Oh yeah, and if it's, and if that's temporary- It's a temporary, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tanitra Michelle Williams would rather you forego that for a couple months so that the rest of your life, the quality of your life, mm -hmm. you know, is incredible and it's so well-deserved. You've gone through all that training and stuff. You deserve that when it's all over, um, you deserve happiness. You deserve joy, wholeness, and healing. Because you might have even been going through stuff even before you joined the military. Yeah, absolutely. So you're that's compacted on what you've seen while you're in the military. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think people are more focused on, because, you know, li life is all about timing. I mean, I'm sure your that's career, good. your yeah. career is, is about timing. You're in the right place at the right time. And so if, if you feel like you're in the right place at the right time, and now I can't take advantage of that opportunity because of X, Y, and Z, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm less likely to go seek help and do what it is I need to do for myself. And I just think that's the wrong, the wrong way to look at it. It's, yes. okay. it's everything okay. happens for a reason, right? So even, even the opportunities that I missed out on and coming throughout my career, uh, I wouldn't have got to this point in my career if, if I would have got opportunities or, or if I wouldn't, wouldn't have got those no's or those missed opportunity uh, okay the okay so, okay so it's, it's just a mind frame but you know i but we we as leaders in the military do have to uh kind of quell that stigma of you, you i'm gonna mess up my career if i go seek mental health and this is not the mm -hmm. case i'm so sorry yeah but you know for me you know too i was like man me being public about you know uh with depression, you know, will people see me as a liability? Will they be like, we can't hire her because we don't know if she's going to be depressed today. But there's been many more people who have appreciated me for being honest about my journey and it's made them go seek help or just research more about it. To me, that's what matters to me. And at the end of the day, because it's coming from a good place, God is going to take care of me that's it yeah mm -hmm. and and you kind of brought something up but it kind of reminds me of uh naomi osaka who just came out publicly about her battle with depression and she withdrew mm -hmm. herself from the actual tournament and so uh just to see the world shifting and being able to uh -huh. say you know what uh i don't care what platform i'm on i don't care what industry i that's work right. in i don't care from military entertainer sports like this is a real thing and this is something that uh that that is very important to me and I applaud that young lady for for, yes. for speaking up and, and and saying those things. So a big shout out to her. Yeah, and you know, well, I don't know if she was afraid of making that decision, but it's that's that to me, doing something afraid. It takes one person to change the world. It takes one person to change. She might change the world of sports as it mm -hmm. relates to how you deal with people who are going through depression or anxiety or your diagnosis being bipolar or whatever your diagnosis has been. And I also want to encourage people too, that diagnosis is not who you are. It's a part of your journey. It's just a part of your story. It's not the sum total that makes you, you it just, it's so I do, I don't, I don't want anybody to be ashamed of even a certain diagnosis uh, that you have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man, you just dropping nuggets and, and, and gems to our viewers, and we definitely appreciate you. Uh, now, kind of moving to a lighter subject, um, we can't let you go without talking about the mass Singer, right? So, uh, 
you, so you performed as as the butterfly. So we had Clint Black on the show uh, a few weeks ago. Wow. And he, and he mentioned that he was in the Mass Singer, and and the one thing he told us about was that doggone costume was hot as all get out. <laughs> so so he he did he did give us that piece of uh, but he enjoyed it. He, so I just kind of want to know what what was that experience like for you? Yeah. See, a lot of people chose these big furry animals and monsters <laughs> and stuff. I chose something that was even kind of similar to Destiny's Child uniforms at the time. You know, the tight legging type things. And the only thing now, I, the thing that was heavy were the wings. Mm -hmm. My headpiece, um, because I didn't have to wear it so long. I was okay, and I like to be warm. So there are two things: I'm a homebody, and I like to be warm. So you're always cold, huh? When it's when it's 80 or 90 degrees out, my air conditioning is is still off. Oh wow! I, I might turn the air conditioning on just to get some circulation going, but I'm not the type of person that runs my air conditioner 24 seven because I don't like being cold. So do you got blankets like all over the house? Is that is that? I do. I do. <laughs> I sure do. I sure do. I think we're the I, same person. I sure do. I had, I, I had a therapy session this morning and I was wrapped up in my blanket, nice and warm. <laughs> um, by the way, I don't know, do y'all know about weighted blankets? So we so we had Dr. Oz Dr. on the show. Oh, Dr. Oz oh. has weighted blankets. That's he, he, on shopmikeshane.com, everyone. But uh, I haven't tried them. Uh, they are you recommending? Are, uh, amazing gotcha i put it right on me if i'm having trouble going to sleep and i don't know and it every every morning when i wake up i'm like i don't remember falling asleep <laughs> it's brilliant okay weighted blankets so you you're suggesting okay i might have to try it out i haven't tried out weighted blankets yet you must and you have to get one i think that's like 10 percent of your body weight oh okay They'll get it definitely for some of y'all in the military. You need like the 25 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you going to have me have a complex over here. I was like, man, why can't I get the 10 pounds? <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good stuff. So um, besides your new book, what's what's ahead for you? What, what kind of, you got any new music or projects you can talk about? You know, I I'm just continuing in on this journey. I think for the next couple of years, um, this path of healing and wholeness is where I want to be for people, you know, and if music finds its way in there for sure, um, that's not my focus at the moment. My focus is getting people like checking in and zoning in, you know, on their mental health right now. And then you also have the Checking In podcast, and you've had some terrific guests like Macy Gray and Dr. Oz. So yes. Can you tell us about the podcast, and then where can we find it? Yes. So my podcast can be found wherever you get your podcast. Um, it's on um, Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast Club. Um, he has a podcast network called The Black Effect, yep. and um, so it's a partnership with iHeart Radio. So you can definitely find it on iHeart, Spotify, Apple, um, wherever you get your podcast. It's literally, it's called Checking In with Michelle Williams. So did you, I mean, could you see, so I know podcasts kind of start booming uh, after as a pandemic, like it just seemed like it started popping up. Was that, is that your comfort zone to just- Absolutely, uh, speaking, uh, talk yeah. show stuff, absolutely, okay. absolutely. That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, this has been awesome. And um, just one last reminder for our viewers, it matters where you shop and you can find Michelle's new book, Checking In at shopmyexchange.com and in select exchange stores. Uh, but before we say goodbye, Michelle, remind us where can we keep up with you and what's yeah. going on with Michelle? Thank you so much. You can keep up with me. I'm on Instagram at Michelle Williams, um, Facebook um, at Mich um, just Michelle Williams. Um, I have a newsletter um, checking in with Michelle.com. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. So Michelle, it has been a true honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Aww. We appreciate your time. You, like I said, um, the fact that you're touching on a subject that really, really hits home mm. with, with everyone, everyone it mm. goes through mm. something and for you yeah. to, you know, highlight yeah. your story and really kind of bring us along your journey. I think that that's admirable and we definitely appreciate you for that. I am so appreciative of being here with you guys and um, 
just know that you're loved and um, thank you from the bottom of my heart of what you do for America and beyond. Thank you, thank you. So uh, we wish you all the best, uh, best of luck on the book, uh, on the podcast. We, we got you, we support you, we love you, we appreciate you and thank you so much. And uh, with that said, Chief Chat out. Amazing, <laughs> salute, right hand, right. There you go. Mm -hmm.